I'm sorry for not being able to attend the ABBA meeting this year. Because of poor health, my lungs, I was strongly advised not to travel anywhere during the influenza epidemic. I begin with thanks to the board of directors of SABA for this distinction. The award for the International Dissemination of Behavioral Analysis 2009 is an honor that I cherish. I must point out, however, some people who were co-responsible for my deeds, beginning with Gil Sherman, my teacher in Sao Paulo, who suggested my name to Carolina Bori, who invited me to join Fred Keller in Brasilia. I was supposed to apply for a PhD in Colombia, but Keller convinced me to go to Arizona State University, where, where I met as teachers Greenspoon, Barkrack, Brownstein, Pliskov, Verhav, Jack Michael, Lee Myers, and worked as teaching assistant uh, to Keller and Gil Sherman, developing the personalized system of instruction. My colleagues in the graduate program of the good old times are today in the list of who is who in behavioral analysis. Rick Shaw, Randy Flory, Donald Green, John Bailey, Scott Lawrence, Scott Woods, and Andre Fleming Holland. With that quality of influence, I had to do something good in my life. I owe also to my students from the United States where I started my teaching career at the Mary Washington College of the University of Virginia, invited by my former teacher, James Russell Nazaro, then chair of the Department of Psychology. In Mexico, invited by Emilio Ribes, I had the chance to learn from Mexican, Colombian, and Venezuelan students. In Brazil, at first in the University of Sao Paulo, then the University of Brasilia, and now the Catholic University of Goiás and ESB, I was fortunate to meet excellent students like Daisy das Graças de Souza and Elenice Hanna, some of them behind the movement that resulted in my nomination for the consideration of the Board of Directors of SABA. Much of this honor I owe to Maria Silvia Ribeiro Todorov, my wife. She has been offering advice and support since we were graduate students at the University of Brasilia and joined me in several journeys, moving from country to country, state to state, city to city, with or without our children, Julia and Francisco, who now have their own children, Clara, Anna, Leon, Isabella, and Sofia. My special thanks to Silvia and our offspring. As a teacher and researcher, I always prepare my students for a PhD outside the country, even after our graduate programs were established. From the beginning, the students were directed to different countries, the United States, Mexico, Great Britain, and Belgium, and different research areas, trying to avoid inbreeding. Unfortunately, Brazil has gone the other way for the last 20 years. No more scholarships for a PhD abroad if we have a similar program in Brazil. That's too bad for a country who speaks Portuguese. Brazilian researchers are staying in the country, publishing in Portuguese. The present ceremony gives me the opportunity to begin another program for the dissemination of Brazilian behavioral analysis abroad, asking my colleagues to at least publish in English. For that purpose, we have the Brazilian Journal of Behavioral Analysis. In spite of being in danger of becoming unlivable for us, the world is somewhat, somewhat a better place to live now than some 50 years before. Knowledge, as well as influenza, travels faster across borders. And the number of people going places around the world as tourists or looking for work is record-breaking. In such a global world, it makes no sense the limitation of student formation within the borders of any country. 
The further dissemination of behavioral analysis will depend on the sharing of knowledge and the uniform development of one science of behavior.